devices. Isn't that good? I remember that time. I'm tired of everybody when I say media appliances, everyone saying, oh, you're in the microwave. So media devices, you can open to the book of Philippians, please. Yeah, okay, we'll do that, Pastor Joe. Yeah, sure, we'll nudge me. Actually, you know what? We'll do that anyway. I wasn't going to do it this morning because I got carried away with the worship. But you know what? We're going to do it. We're going to do it. All right, because, yeah, we'll do it. Everybody stand up for me. There you go. Pastor Cheryl's just reminding me, so I'm going to interject my own self for a minute. Tony, um, in, when he did his welcome this morning, said if anybody had a word of encouragement or something for somebody. Anybody have one? Did anybody have a word for somebody in here? What? Yeah, Annie Cheryl's got one. That's why I've been prompted. Well, we're going to, because we're going to do this at One Voice Church. Last week, did you have one? Oh, yes, too. So you can wait for a minute now. Cool. Last week we did that. So how many of you actually take the time to pray coming to church about God using you? I hands up high so I can see. Well, how are you ever going to move in the power of God if you don't ask? Fair call? So every morning, it's, it's funny. All right, so you can all close your eyes. And so nobody peeping, no peepers, Luke. You know, like that. That's pretty cool. They just close one eye and leave one eye open. You don't have to close them if you don't want to. Closing the eyes is about blocking everybody else out. It's not about you're suddenly more intimate with God because your eyes are closed. That's not what it is. All of this is blocking other people out. So I just want you to put your hands up if you want to see God use you to touch people's lives. In the spirit, that is. Not just, you know, in the flesh. So hands up nice and high, everybody, so I can see you all. That's 95% of everybody in here. Put your hands back down. How many of you take the time from driving from your place to here? Because here's the place that we should practice on each other. Now, that's extreme way of putting it. That's true, though. We can't. If we can't minister to our own, how are we going to minister to those that are not of our own? If we can't minister in here and, f and learn to trust God and learn to feel safe and be secure, how are you going to minister to people out there that are of the world? So, with your eyes closed, we're going to practice this. So, hands up those that actually pray, come into church, Lord, give me a word for somebody today. Or <coughs> healing or deliverance or whatever it is. Hands up, I. There's a couple over there, a couple over there. You know what I've just noticed? 95% of the hands up saying, God, I want you to use me. 75% of the hands up saying, I'm willing to go. Because that's what you're saying to God. So I'm going to teach you the simplicity of moving in the power of God. The Bible says, don't ask me where to quote it ever because I'll forget. The Bible says that only the Spirit of God can tell you the things of God. So I'm going to keep it simple for you. Only God can tell you that He loves you. The devil is never going to tell you you're loved by God. In fact, he wants to steal that from you. you are got that. So if you go up to somebody and you say, God's told me to tell you that he loves you as you are, it has to be a word from God. You know that? If you go up to somebody and say, God says you've got to get your life in order, then I'm going to question you pretty quick. Isn't that right, Meryl? Yes. Because it's about edification. Yeah, It's about building up. So let me show you, if you're praying and you get this voice that says, God hates you, <laughs> that does not come from God, that comes from the other one. This is how you tell the difference. God will never tell you that he hates you and the devil will never tell you that he loves you. Cool bananas? It's that simple. And before everybody says, ah, oh, this is mundane and stupid, this is how I start. So I can only teach you what I know. Cool bananas? And Cheryl's got a word that says, Emma. So what we're going to do is with your eyes closed, I want you to say, Lord, who in here do you want me to right now to go tell them that you love them? Now that could be with a little bit extra on top. It could be God might want you to go and pray for healing for them. It could be that God wants you to set them free. It could be that God wants you for them to give their life to Jesus. Fair call? So let's start with the basics. The basics are, who do you want me to say that you love? Now, if you're used to ministering, and there's people in here that actually minister, I want you to take some handcuffs off. Take off your restraints. And let me tell you what your restraints are. Fear. Doubt. So if you minister 
then I want you to know that I am releasing you to minister. If you go to lay hands on somebody, you will not lay hands on somebody in my presence unless you ask them first. I believe in integrity, yeah? Because you don't know people's lives. Some people you might lay hands on them and they could have been abused. Before you lay hands on anyone, you ask for permissions. Everybody got that? I'm going to set some simple rules. Before you give a word of knowledge to anybody, you ask. Now, I believe if you obey those two clear integrity and honour statements, now, if somebody doesn't want to hear a word and they go, I don't want to hear it, then stop and walk away. Because your job to give the word has been fulfilled by them saying no. Fair call? You all got that? So let's practice. Now, remember, I'm releasing some of you that know how to minister. But remember, I do expect integrity and honour for the Spirit of God and for His people to be present. So please ask before you do anything. Cool. Now, hands up while I've been waffling on if you've actually got a word. So you two, yeah, I already know. Another one, yeah? Hands up if you've got a word. Because you should have been asking while I was talking. So hands up if you've got a word. And I don't care how stupid the word sounds, trust God with it, yeah? So you got one, Andrew? Did you just put your hand up? Cool. Now, I don't care if you've only been here for one day. The Spirit of God is the Spirit of God. We're a family, yeah? Just remember, cool, baby. Just remember the honour and integrity and respect thing. All right, let's try that again. Everybody's hands up because there's only a few that went up there. Now, hands are going up everywhere. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to release you to go and give that word. Go pray, whatever it is that God's told you to do. Then we're going to come back and we're going to have a look at some testimonies of what happened. So, I expect you to be honest for the benefit of others. Somebody prays for you, nothing happens, and say nothing happened, yeah? I'm not into this name and claim and crap, right? If you do get prayed for and something happens or it speaks to you, I want you to testify to build up the faith of others. That's the purpose for testifying. Off you go. We've got a couple of minutes to go. Did you want to give yours open, like, publicly? Yeah, mine's not possible, but... No, okay, so before you go, before you go, where'd our microphone go then? Yeah, yeah, so you got yours, come on. Yeah, wait. Pastors, man, who'd want to be a pastor, Andrew? Um, this one is for um, several people that struggle to hear and find time to talk with God. He said, make use of the quiet moments and those mundane opportunities like scrubbing the toilet, doing the dishes, hanging out the washing, and swearing at the cat. Okay. Cool. So Emma, just before you go off, so if that's you and you know it's you, I just want you to get Emma to pray for it. Before, like when we do the mingling thing, just come up and get her to pray for it, because God's going to do something. Cool, off you go Cheryl, what's yours? Pastor Cheryl, I should say. Pastor Buck. I did get a word, but no name. So God is telling you all, it's your time. That's a cool word, so you stay right there too. So if anybody's oh yeah, nice, sorry. So if anybody's um, got it in the heart wondering whether God's bypassed them or overlooked them and that word is a short time, I want you to get Cheryl to pray for you. Um, I couldn't get out of my own way this morning, so I didn't get a name. But I just got glory, glory, glory. So I, I couldn't I couldn't shut my head up enough to get a name. <laughs> Well done. All right, so everybody up you get and off you go. Thank you. Up you go. And off you go. If you haven't got a word for something, then maybe you're one of those to get the word.
things that I've learned and I want to empower you with it. You got to wear too. For me. Oh God, this is good. Oh, my back on again. Alright, so I want to teach you something. I'm going to use the word teach, and if that's offensive, please forgive me, but I want to actually get you to get this. If God didn't need all of you, there wouldn't be church and there wouldn't be us. So I want you to get this clearly. If you look through the Bible, the prophets of old, God chose and selected people, and I believe He's called and selected and chose you. The million dollar question here is not whether God's equipped you or empowered you to go. The question is, are you going to go? Not the other way around. I don't care what other people teach. I believe you have all of the gifts attaining to life. I believe all of you have it. It's whether you're willing to walk in it or not. It's whether you're willing to try. So I believe, and Carrie, I hope some people, you, did anybody come up for prayer from you? Okay, so what we're going to do when the service is finished, you're going, good? Yeah, that's me as well. That's you too. Carrie, you're going to pray for him. And I'm going to show you why we've got to do it this way. Because if God gives the word to you, he expects to do something through you. You know, he doesn't give you a word. He's not an Indian giver. Anybody ever notice that about God? If he says to do something, he wants you to do it. Not the pastor, not the elders. He wants you to do it. So if God's, like just with Carrie, I believe God moves through you if you're willing to let him when you do what he's told you to do. Does that make sense? All right, so quick, 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 quick. How many people got touched by whatever somebody did for them? Yeah, one over there. Another one. Another one, yeah. So the words of knowledge or somebody praying, how many people got touched by God with that? Just put your hand right up on Because that's the testimony right there. So out of everybody that got a word of knowledge, people got touched. You know what God wants to do in our community? <laughs> My goodness. You, pray too. you know, I got grumpy this week because I didn't see a salvation this week. You know that? How grumpy you got. Man, I've been seeing salvations weekly in my own personal walk with God. And this week there wasn't one. But everybody I prayed healing for this week got healed. That's done my head in. Every single person that I prayed for has been touched by God this week. So I'm like, wow, oh, this is pretty cool. I'm even getting gamer and gamer now, so well, tell me what you want. I'm going to tell you guys going to give it to you. All right. We're going to keep doing this every week. This is in the church and it's staying in the church. It's whatever time in the sermon God reminds or like in the service, God reminds me to do it. So if you want to walk in the power of God and you want to see God use you to change lives, start praying on your way to church, specifically for here. I learned a long time ago, I do six, seven counseling sessions a day. 
I have to pray between each one. How many of you have got a prayer life? You know, ask God to use you in the community. Ask God to use you in the shopping centre. And that gets a bit out there because everybody starts peeking and panicking. And, but you, it's the old Ernie Dingo thing with the Northern Territory. Remember that ad? You're never going to know if you... It's a catch-22 here. You want to do it, then you've actually got to go do it. You want to see God use you? So get rid of any false teachings you've ever heard about only pastors can do it. Or you've got to be uh, trained and you've got to be qualified. Get rid of all of that. And the reason I say get rid of all of that is I've had fun with Gossip High School because they required me to do a, what is it? What's the... Uh, and I think they spun out because I'm an ordained pastor who never went to school. So I don't actually have any of those qualifications. You'll realise that, yeah? So I got a little card that says ordained pastor like everybody else so I can do weddings and all of that yet never did one second of school. And in fact, Pastor Cheryl doing school? What do you reckon would happen if I was trying that? No, no, not happening. I couldn't cope. Already her schooling's doing my head in. I reckon you must well go to Catholic school, but anyway, that's me personally. So I said, God oh, had to get around that with me, Drew, just like he will get around you. If there's things that he's got to get around in your life, he will because he wants to change this world through you. I wish that people, my prayer is that people get that. And you don't have to be all super spiritual. You don't have to be, you know, whatever. Poor old Pastor Cheryl, she freaks that I get all the favour in the world in the school. Don't have to cover my tattoos up. I don't, and you know what? I've made it clear to them, if you don't want me the way I am, then I won't go. Because if I'm good enough to Christ the way I am, what do you think? Are you good enough to Christ the way you are? All your warts and all? All your hindrances, all your problems, are you good enough for it? Then he's good enough for you. If you're good enough for him, he's good enough for you. So anyway, we'll get off that. All right, so every, every Sunday morning, if you want, you're going to have an opportunity. And what's the worst that can happen, by the way? What's the worst, what's the worst you can get wrong? Somebody tell you to get stuffed? What's the worst that can happen to you? Somebody's going to slit your throat? That's not going to happen in Australia. Somebody can say they'll never talk to you again. Most people, as soon as you say you're a Christian, go on Facebook and see what's happening. Go on social media and see what's happening. They're going to come against you anyway, so what do I worry about? Why don't you just get on with serving God? Kimberly sent me this little clip, and if anybody's interested in hearing it, it's a clip about a bloke in Sydney who never seen one salvation, yet he handed out a pamphlet to people saying, Repent for the kingdom of heaven. If you die tonight, where are you going? And this other pastor in England, in three-year period, bumps into all these people testifying about this one person in George Street in Sydney. So this pastor in England freaked out because he's hearing all these testimonies. So he goes to this bloke in George Street in Sydney, finds this bloke old and frail, and the bloke goes, oh, I've never seen one salvation. Yet all the testimonies of him just handing out a, fl out a flyer what do you reckon his reward is in heaven? You know, if you've got to see evidence of things before you go, you're going by the wrong motive. Just go. Let God do the rest. Let him have fun with it. All right. I'll try and keep the sermon short. All right, so Philippians 4, I think it's verse 8. Hey, here we go. All during this week, and again, because I haven't seen salvations, and that's weird because I've seen five in the last period of time, week and a half, whatever it was, I sent Bible. Something else happened this week. Instead of going into the lives of people that are lost, I've gone into the lives of people that are hurt. Gone into the lives of people that are struggling inside. You all know they're out there, yeah? In fact, many of us sitting here. How many of us put on that really nice smile, yeah? But inside. All right. So with all of this, I started looking at what, are, what is the secret to life? What is the secret to godliness, holiness? What is the secret? And through discussions with people and watching God heal people on the spot, and people getting revelation, true Luke getting God just turn up later, asking him for direction, and then he speaks. I've been watching this all week. I started saying, what is it? 
All of us go through different things in different ways. All of us have different things happen at different times. So what is the one common denominator to finding in here? So go start showing me. Remember last week we spoke about that prayer about protection from the enemy? Remember Jesus said, I'm not taking you out of the world, I'm leaving you in the world. And he was saying that I pray. So Jesus' prayer for us is that we are protected by God from the evil one. Yet we're in this world, so we're still going to have problems, yeah? So what are we being protected from? <laughs> Losing salvation? Getting tempted to sin? Tony really helped me out a lot with that message last week, just for some of his thoughts on a Saturday. So I want to move on a little bit from that. So we're going to jump through the first bit pretty quick, but it's a bit of a backdrop to what we're going to get to. So how many know this scripture? One of the most encouraging scriptures in the Bible. You know why it's one of the most encouraging? Because it's saying about how you should be, not other people. So let's read it. So this is from the Amplified. For the rest, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is worthy of reverence and is honourable and seemly, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is lovable. Next one, please. Whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there is any virtue and excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on and weigh and take account of these things. When I left this morning to come here and I was praying, you know, sorry if I'm looked a bit nutcase this morning. That was on my heart. I just wanted to praise him this morning. Yeah, you know, man. I don't know. This morning I just felt to glorify him. So good to see some of you up and moving with me. Sorry if I looked a bit out there with the fairies. But you know, it doesn't matter what you think anyway. Sorry if that's offensive. I had it in my heart this morning, so I wanted to dance before him because right now, hopefully next week we've got a big announcement to make. He's doing things that are tripping me out. I don't know what you see in your life, but when I've got people ringing me and saying, hey, can I talk to you? What you prayed last night has happened already. So I've watched factual healings happening. There's about half a dozen of them this week. Factual. So maybe that's not blowing you away, but it's blowing me away. Because when you're a pastor and you go out there and you've got people with cancer and you've got people that are dying and you're saying Jesus heals and they don't get healed, it can get despondent pretty quick. I've got the same problems as the rest of these have and I don't know, out of nowhere, Luke was talking to me about hearing the word of the Lord, yeah, Luke? <laughs> Rudy was talking to me during the week, so I'm going to pick on him for a minute. And he said this one thing, and it did my head in, he said about the favour of God. So I went home and I prayed this the night before a certain thing happened. And I went, Lord, if I have any favour with you, if I have any favour at all with you, and I know I have favour, do you know you have favour with God? Do you know you have favour? Not think it, but you know you have favour with God. You need to get there if you don't know. And I went, if I have any favour with you, Lord, and I know I do, will you do this for me? Man, the next phone, the next morning the phone call to come in, I think freaked a few people out, didn't it, Pete? Freaked a few of us out, and hopefully we'll touch more on that next week. If I have any favour with you, Lord. I want you to take a minute just to think about what we just read in the scriptures. It's all about conduct going out. Yeah? You got that? Don't focus on what's wrong, focus on what's right. Don't focus on people's bad points, focus what's right in God about them. Don't pull their lives to pieces, put it back together. How's that sound? You want to see the power of God move, then we've got to stop pulling people's lives to pieces. Because it's very hard for the favour of God to come where there's unforgiveness and judgment, where there's opinions. It's very hard for that favour to come upon us unless we actually walk the way He's called us to walk. Now, I'm not going to say this lawfully, okay? So please don't get offended. I'm not saying you've got to get your life right to follow Christ. I'm saying through Christ, He'll get your life right. Did you hear that? Yes. You don't have to get your life right to follow Christ because you never will. But through Christ, He can get your life right. Do you know what right standing with God is? Do you know what righteousness means? Do you know what it means? What right standing means with God? Do you know what it means for you? Don't worry about what everybody else says about it. What does it say to you? This is what it says to me, that I am in agreement with God. That's right standing. Jesus said, I've forgiven your sin. I love you as you are. You're mine. I believe that, so I agree with that. Do you agree? That your sins are paid in full? Yes. Do you agree that it doesn't matter what you look like or how you talk? Oh, but wait a minute. Hang on. That's where. 
don't get things wrong. If I told everybody, because I go into the world, right? What, what language do you reckon I get to hear? Man, I'm under mile an hour. I wonder what Jesus got to hear. So why don't we start focusing on this? Instead of worrying about other people's problems, maybe there's a secret to life here. Maybe there's a secret because the Bible says what's in your heart will come out of your mouth. If you're free inside, how many of you are free? I mean free. Every hand should go up if you're a Christian. Whether you feel it or not, it should not matter. Jesus said, I've come to set you free. And when you receive me, you become free in... In what? Indeed. What does that mean? Totally. In action. So let's just try this again. If you've given your life to Jesus, are you free? Yes. Well, can you believe it? Yes. But hang on a minute, Red. I got this, and I got this, and I got this, and I got this. I can't remember who it was was talking to me. Somebody wasn't. If that was somebody in here, forgive me, I forgot that you told it to me. But, you know, I think it's cool that Peter denies Jesus three times. And then Jesus goes to Peter three times and says, Do you love me, Peter? Doesn't say, you idiot. Doesn't say, you failed. Yet he's already told him that he's going to deny him three times before the rooster crows. Tells him to his face after Peter says, I'll do whatever we do. If God can look at that, and still consider him righteous through Christ, what do you reckon the hope is for the rest of us? Let's start focusing on what God says about people. What does God say about you? What does he say about your neighbour? The person sitting next to you? What does he say about that person down the river, that alcoholic, that drug addict? What does he say about that rapist, that murderer? What does he say? You can't answer this for anybody else, you can only answer it for yourself. <laughs> Maybe we've got to see them how Jesus sees them. You know what he says to me? To me. Now, my children, just like you are. So what? You're saying that you can do for them what you did for me? You can forgive me of my sin? You can forgive theirs? Now you don't have to do anything except be what that says. Look at all things praiseworthy, all things noble. All right. Let's go to the next one, please. I'm going to try and get through this because there's a bit to do and we're running out of time. All right. <laughs> Can you all read what that says? It's actually funny because in my phone um, app it says it in the one sentence, but what does that say up there? Fix your minds on them. Who should your eyes be fixed on? Jesus, yeah? If your eyes are fixed on Jesus, then you won't have time to find the fault with them. Because if you take the time to pray for him, and if you want to see healings in amongst these things, you can't go in with judgment. Jesus didn't judge them. I think what we heard Duncan say this morning, that Jesus let the lepers touch you. Is that what we heard this morning, Duncan, through communion? How many of you are willing to let unclean people touch you? You can answer that one in front of God, not me. Boy, that gets a bit scary, doesn't it? You want to see addicts set free, then you've got to be in the presence of addicts. You want to see people healed, then you're going to have people drop dead in front of you. Be in wheelchairs in front of you. Be broken in front of you. I watched a man on Tuesday night, Duncan, you were there, yeah? Talk about how he couldn't grab a cup, yeah? Mm -hmm. And after a couple of times of praying, and he was saying, Ah, oh, I don't know, I'm saying, well, I believe, I don't care what you think. He actually grabbed the cup and lifted it up, Duncan. Freaked him out a bit, didn't it? <laughs> You were there. Yeah. What did he do? He took off. Yeah. Freaked him out that much, he took off. You know what I prayed? Let me show you what I prayed. In front of him, I said, Lord, so that he may see your glory. Not see who's praying, see his glory. You know, Jesus said that when he healed the person who was blind, I think it was. So that he could see your glory. You want people to see God's glory that he's given you? You all got given glory, you know that, don't you? Nobody become your saviour. You're going to live in eternity forever. Isn't that glorified, Isn't that glorified enough? All right, next one, please. I think there's more in there. Practice what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. So this is Paul now talking, right? So let's just imagine the word me means Jesus, okay? Even though it's Paul talking to the Philippians. Practice what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and model your way of living on it. And the God of peace, of untroubled, undisturbed well-being, will be with you. I like the last part. Troubled. And, what is it? Untroubled, undisturbed. How many of us face disturbance from time to time? And I'm going to be completely honest and say, welcome to my world. 
I'm not going to sit here and lie. There are things that happen in my family, in my life. Man, I'm not ready for them. They trip me right out when they happen. Anybody else got that problem? Hey. So, I like how he says there, and the God of peace, of untroubled, undisturbed, undisturbed well-being will be where? With you. You want to start seeing secrets to life? He is with you. Wherever you go, whatever you do, whatever you're going through, whatever others are doing to you, He is with you. That don't change the, what is it, the power of what's happening against you, but doesn't it change a little bit if you know He's with you? Or do some of you still believe that He's angry at you, mad at you? You're not good enough for Him. Is there those of us still in here that still think He's going to smack us if we stuff up? You've got to ask this question of yourself. I stuff up, believe me. <laughs> believe me. I actually heard somebody say, Brad, that's the first time I've heard you swear like that. And I know, oh God, you should be around more often when I'm in the car. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm not going to stand up here and make myself look like I've got all far from it, mate. But if you had seen me 20 years ago, I reckon I've done a pretty good job. Hey, Luke. I reckon he's done an excellent job getting me from there to here. Maybe by the time I drop dead, and I'm hoping that's why I'm in the 80s, maybe we'll actually get it together. Maybe. See, I don't pressure myself. I don't believe I have to live up to any of your expectations or anybody else's because Christ loves me as I am. And because He loves me as I am, He knows my weaknesses. He knows my faults. He knows when I freak out. He knows what burdens me, and I trust Him that He can get me through it. You got that trust? Doesn't change when I have a hissy fit doesn't change when I break down. Where are you? See, when you're in my shoes and you see him healing and delivering and then suddenly you've got problems in your own family and you don't see it happen, guess what do you think I do? Where are you, God? Have you gone to the toilet? Secret to living life, I think, no matter what's coming against you, is knowing that he's with you. Knowing that he's not going to kick you out just because you stuff up. I think we've got more, haven't we? Yep. Goes to 13, doesn't it? Just so I know what I'm doing. Yep. I was made very happy in the Lord that now you have revived your interest in my welfare. After so long a time, you're indeed thinking of me, but you had no opportunity to show it. Paul's talking to the Philippians. So let me show you something. Let's make it this is Jesus again. Can we do that? Probably not allowed him, but we will. I was made very happy in the Lord that you have revived your interest in my welfare. Imagine if we started reviving interest in the welfare of others. Imagine if we started thinking about Jesus with them. I wonder how many opportunities would come your way to be him to people. What do you think? 95% of you put your hand up and said, I want to do things for him. Well, why don't you start thinking about the world? Start thinking about the neighbour up the road that you've been talking to but too scared to say you're a Christian to them. Maybe now it's time to start thinking and saying, okay, Lord, I'm going to do it. What's the worst that can happen? I've actually got this in, because I'm going over to New South Wales, right, with my mum and with my son. I've got a fair bit of homosexuality in my family. I'm going to be right in the middle of it. Go guilty. Because I don't get to take a holiday as a pastor, do I? You think God's just going to say, take a month off? We're going to get to work over this. I'm already praying before I get there now. Come on, God, let's move. Come on, set them free. Because I know each one of them have been abused physically. That's why they've got my homosexuality. So I already know that. Come on, Lord, move. Move within them. What do you reckon could happen? They could boot me out of New South Wales. Cool. I live in South Australia. Isn't it? What's your neighbour going to do? Boot you out of his house? You live next door anyway? It's an horrible. <laughs> and put you out of the street, go back home. Anyway, next one please. Not that I am implying that I was in any personal want, for I've learned how to be content, satisfied to the point where I am not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state I am. We're going to start looking now at a secret in life. How many of you have found contentment in where you're at? That is the biggest secret to life moment you can find for contentment in your finances, in your health, in your relationships. Do you know what contentment means? 
well, this is where the fun starts because we'd all like to say, yeah, I haven't found contentment yet. I still need more things. Which means, this means a lot to me because I'm hearing God speaking to me. Next one, please. I know how to be abased and live humbly in straitened circumstances and I know also how to enjoy plenty and live in abundance. When you listen to what Paul's speaking here, he's talking to the Philippians and he's saying, and you're about to see the secret, because it says it up there in this verse. He starts speaking about when I've had nothing, I've learned to be content. He starts talking about when I've had everything, I've learned to be content too. How many of us have learned to be content with whatever we've got, not what we haven't got? I remember my late father-in-law, back when I was young, he said something that really spoke to me. He said, if you earn $400 a week, you'll live to $400 a week and it won't be enough. If you earn $4,000 a week, you'll live to $4,000 a week and it won't be enough. Because it's not about the amount, it's about the gratitude and contentment in what you've got. I heard a testimony once upon a time of a man who had something like $12 billion. You know, we had the global financial collapse, come back a few years. He lost $4 billion, so he went and jumped in front of one of Germany's fastest trains and killed himself because he couldn't go. Lost $4 billion, still got $8 billion left. I've lived with people, I've seen people like this. You know, contentment isn't just financial contentment, that even though you're still a bit broken, Jesus loves you. Even though you've got a few problems you still need to deal with, Jesus loves you. Isn't that true contentment? Who would like to be able to contend in themselves that no matter what they do, they know they're forgiven? Who would want that? I certainly do. And I'm really walking towards that because I'm sick of everybody telling me I've got to cover my tattoos, I've got to dress up properly, can't look like I do. But you know what? This is how Jesus found me, so if you're not down with it, bad luck, because I'm not bothered about that. He found me in here. This is mortal, mate. This will, I've been into the nurse home. Anybody been in the nurse home? Heaven forbid I'm going to start looking like Alan one day. You never look that good. <laughs> Here's the point. I know it's coming, don't you? Don't you? Don't you know that, you know, I watch all these young girls and believe me, when you start talking 12 year old, 13 year old girls in school with eating disorders because I don't think they're beautiful. How many of you know you're beautiful as you are? And <laughs> you've got to start finding contentment. It doesn't have to matter what you look like. Jesus wants you to know that as you are, He is. Man, I was mucking around with my son doing the old gun things with him. Remember that, Emmy? And mum turned around as in the map, she turned around and she said to, to me, she goes, mmm, yeah. I said, they're 18 inch guns. And she went, mmm, they are three up, 15 down. <laughs> and I laughed. I know people that if you spoke that to them, they'd be suicidal. Because their contentment is not found in who they are, it's found in who everybody else thinks they are. Let's keep going. I have really, oh no, back, sorry, I haven't finished with the, I only got halfway through that one, thank you. Also I know how to enjoy plenty, learn, and I have learned in any and all circumstances the secret of facing every situation, whether well fed or going hungry, having a sufficiency and enough to spare, or going without and being in want. Next one, please. Yeah. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. How many of you have been in that position where you know that you're just not going to make it, that if he didn't intervene or he didn't help you, you'd fall over? How many of you have been there? Yeah? That's the beautiful thing about Jesus here. You don't have to do it yourself. You don't have to try and work it out. You don't have to strive. All you've got to do is let him outwork in you. You don't have to work this life out. You've just got to let him outwork it through you. Wouldn't that be pretty cool if we handed it over, Sally? There's some people in here this morning that are not handing things over, and I believe that's why we're having this topic today. And I believe that's why some of the words of knowledge that have been given are all in this little area. Because I believe God wants everybody to leave here today knowing who they are, who he is, 
and what he's done for you. I don't believe he wants one person to leave here today not knowing that he is with them and for them. I believe that. Because that's what we're going to minister when we get to the end. I like this. <laughs> I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses an inner, an inner strength into me. You know, I find it funny that uh, the Bible talks about even, you know, the disciples didn't find equality with God or whatever. But can I tell you something? Do you know what Jesus did? You know he made you an heir, don't you? You know he made you a king. You know he made you a priest, yeah? You don't have to be ordained to have any of this. Huh? You know he made you a brother to him. You know that, don't you? Or sister, yeah? Can you get your head around that? There is no grandparents, there is no uncles and aunties, there is no cousins, nephews, there are only brothers and sisters in the house of God. Do you believe that? Well, have a look around at each other. There you go. Thank God some of us have got good DNA. <laughs> have a look around. You're brothers and sisters. And I want to show you something even more gullible. Go into the community and have a look around. They're your brothers and sisters too. Because God loves them as much as he loves you. They just haven't received him yet. No grandparents. No godchildren. No uncles and aunties. So what does that make us all if we're brothers and sisters? Yeah, good one, Tony. What else does it make God to us? The Father. We all have the one Father. Don't we? His name's God. All of us equal. What Jesus had, you have, because he said, I have to go back to the Father. This is what he said, not me. I have to go back so that you can have the one that can be with all of you. Because I'm limited to human form. Do you all know who he sent back? The Holy Spirit. Who's the Holy Spirit? Jesus Spirit. Yeah. yeah. The very presence of God. He sent back to you. So when somebody tries to tell you you're not qualified, you're not good enough, when they try to say you're too anointed or not anointed, or you're chosen or you're not, can I say this to you? The Holy Spirit was sent back from Jesus just for you. And all things attaining to life lived in Jesus. Therefore, he's given you everything. Every gift, every blessing, every overcoming, every power. Isn't that what he said? What's the Great Commissioning? Can you all remember it? Matthew 28. Can you all remember what it says? Hey. Go. It's a simple one, isn't it? I've, I've learned this one. I only learned this one this week and it stumped my head in a little bit. He says, go, preach to all nations. You know, when you go out and you share about Jesus, you'll preach. Simple. When you're, tell, when you're talking to people, because I do this all day, every day. So getting up here on a Sunday morning ain't that spectacular because I get to do it one-on-one -on -one with people. And I get to see God do some pretty amazing things that, you know, most of the stuff don't even happen in here with me. It happens in the community. Preach the gospel. Teach the new disciples. You know what that means, don't you? Show them how to live. Teach them how to live. Teach them that they're just as important to God as you are. And then there's the last one. You can pick up and deadly snakes and you can drink poison. In other words, go demonstrate my power. Did you notice he wasn't just talking to 12? He was talking to all of them that were there. And just in case anybody gets super religious on me and goes, well, I'm not sure about that, Red, let me remind you that in the scripture, 72 came back that were casting out demons and said, wow, even the demons bowed to us. That's 72. And Jesus said, don't rejoice that the demons bow to you. Rejoice that your name is in the book of life. Hands up if you think your name's in the book of life. Keep your hand up if you believe that it's in the book of life. That's what you've got to believe, right there. When you give your name, when you give your life to Jesus, when you say, Jesus, come into my heart, my Bible teaches me that right there and then. Can I show you how quick? 
You are recorded in the book of life. Jesus comes and lives in you. And though your body perish, you will live forever. That's a promise to everybody, regardless of what you do. Pretty cool promise, isn't it? So if there's people in here that don't actually know Jesus, and they would like to, we'll do that at the end. All right, that's the last one for there. Here's the secret. All right, I'm going to show you the secret to life that I believe God's showing me. Not about whether I've got plenty or whether I haven't got plenty. It's not about it. I see people getting anxious with this, particularly when you're suddenly having trouble paying your bills. It's been anxious, not it, Tracy? Mm. But he says to have peace in yourself through all things. So 1 Timothy, I think it was, 1 Timothy 6, 6. Here's the secret. Let me read it for you. And it is indeed a source of immense profit for godliness accompanied with contentment. That contentment, which is a sense of inward sufficiency, is great and abundant gain. I didn't write this. There's the secret. When you can find contentment in your heart, you've found the secret of life. Remember, you've already got Jesus, you've already got salvation. We're talking about contentment, not salvation. How many would like to have that? How many would like to have that? I know it's I'm preaching to myself right now. I want to come to that place where I can have contentment inside, but whether I have, whether I don't have, whether there's persecution or great times, I want to be able to have that contentment to be able to stand there and go, I've got peace on the inside. I haven't found that yet. I found it in parts, <coughs> but I haven't found it the way this is talking about. Anybody else found it in parts, but not found it in full? I want to be full. What about you, Andrew? You want to be full? I want to be able to have this peace no matter what goes on. I want to be able to sleep on a boat when the storms are raging just like Jesus did. How would that feel, Catherine? Be able to sleep in that boat when the sea's raging around you. Be a good thing, wouldn't it? God's just giving you the key, by the way. That's for you. If you're the only person that walked in here today, this message is for you. You've been asking him for it. There's your answer. Next one, please. For we brought nothing into the world, and obviously we cannot take anything out of the world. When you came to Jesus, you came with nothing. He gave you everything. When you drop dead, I don't care if you own 30 houses, I don't care if you got 30 debts. You're going exactly the way you came in. You're going naked. Got the great pleasure, I hate doing it, but I've done many funerals. What's funerals like, Cheryl? <laughs> They're not good, are they? You know, when a person's dead, a whole life revolves around a little dash. Do you know that, don't you? On the headstone, it's got born and died. There's a little dash in the middle. That's your whole life summed up. I thank God for Jesus that my life is recorded somewhere else. It's recorded in heaven. My life is recorded in heaven because if I lay down my life and I believe in Him and my name is in the book of life, I will not perish, but I shall live. What a glorious hope that is because this place is pretty... probably can't quite talk the English I'd like to right now. This place is pretty screwed up. What do you think? People stabbing each other with words. People... Oh, my God. Sometimes I ask God, why did you want me to do this? And he said to me, you're the one that said you would come. Wish he hadn't told me what it would look like before I left. Anybody else got that problem? Wish he would just tell you. Not just come. No promises. No guarantees. Just come. But he says, I'll show you things that will blow your mind away. I'm seeing things that are blowing my mind away. I think there's one more, isn't it? Yep. But if we have food and clothing, we, these sh we shall be content, satisfied. What did Jesus say right there? He who thirsts and drinks of this water will never thirst again. He who hungers and eats of this bread will never hunger again. What an amazing promise. And you know the scripture's doing my head in here. Yeah? Because I've been saying, Lord, I want, I want all this stuff in here. You know, I look at the Apostle Paul, I've been talking a bit about him lately. How does he go and get whipped and flogged all those times and go back for more? And as he gets shipwrecked and say to them, oh, there's going to be a storm. And then after the shipwreck, go back again. What do you reckon? You're like ready to line up for that? 
I thought I was ready. I'm like, hey. Mm. He said, you're the one in the middle of the boat in a 14-day storm, yeah? That's what the Bible says. <laughs> How many of us know that we will never thirst again and we will never hunger again because he's in us, regardless of whether we have our daily provision? How many know? Secret to life. If you find this key, that Jesus is for you, not against you, that he is with you, can I tell you that the godliness with contentment is? Great game. What's godliness, by the way? They're all a bit different. Righteousness, godliness, holiness, they're all a bit different. Godliness is living an upright life, yeah? For lack of a better way of putting it. Some people will say this, this, this. I'm just simply saying this. You know what an upright life is? Everybody stand up for one minute. Everybody stand up for one minute. One second. Everybody just stand up. You know, when you stand up in front of all of your sin, when you stand up when nobody's around and you stand before him with boldness and you come into his presence and you say, you love me as I am, that's godliness. Not the life you live. Godliness is when you stand before him with confidence and you say to him, as I am, you are. Even when the whole world will tell you you're broken and you're screwed up and you do this and you do that and even your Christian brothers and sisters will attack you. But if you can stand just like you're standing now spiritually in front of him and put your hand up and say, as I am, you are. And if you do this on a regular basis, we need to, don't we, Marilyn? We need to. When we start feeling that peace, you can all sit down here, by the way. When you start feeling that peace leaving you, when you start feeling the earthquakes moving around you, when you start feeling that you can't cope, I want you to stop. Stand your ground. And let go of everybody else. Hey, Emma. Close your eyes and put your hand up and say, as you are. I am. As I am, you are. I'm tired of hearing about so many people saying that you've got to fix your life to impress Christ. I want to say this to you today. If you could fix your life, don't you think you already would have? Because I would have. If I could have fixed my life, I already would have done it. There's a reason I needed a saviour, and that is because I couldn't fix it. In fact, for me, I couldn't stop the storms. I needed somebody to come and stop the storm within me, to calm the raging seas. And I've discovered something this week. And you know the problem getting up here and preaching in front of you, like now I'm going to have to live it, and that sucks. <laughs> you know why that sucks? Because I know it's coming. This week is showing me to be content that I've got here. Don't worry about anything else. Just be content inside that I'm with you, Red. And I'm going, yeah, I, I know, but pay rise for the church will be healthy. Wait, wait, no, it's much. Deepest. <laughs> and you know what he said to me? I own the cattle on a thousand hills, Red. And I own the sheep in a thousand valleys. The farmer told me that one. I own all the gold in... in Fort Knox, I own all the diamonds, I own all the gold, I own everything on this world is mine. Why don't you just trust me a little? But Lord, it's okay. If the birds of the air are clothed and fed by me, how much more do you think you're precious to me? Trust me. But Lord, how do I trust you? You're going to have to believe before you see. You have to believe and find contentment that you are the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus before you ever see it. Fair call? You're going to have to believe that you're a child of God before you ever feel like you are. True? You're going to have to read the Word and get to know Him and trust Him before you even know how to write or read. There's no shortcuts here. But if you're willing and you want the keys to life, if you want the secret to life, I've just shown it to you. Contentment with godliness is great, baby. All right, you can all close your eyes again. We're going to finish on that. So I know 
Because <laughs> I got a pretty. So that's why I've been in a mischievous mood all morning. Because I got this revelation myself. I just wanted to praise him. Hey, look, I just can't. I just want to praise him because I realize that it don't matter what you say about me. I don't matter anymore. I'm excited that the King of Kings said to me, I will come and get you if you're pointed out. Until then, get on with it. Isn't your life worth much more than these birds to me? Hey, I'm going to ring up the greenies now. Hey, you think cows and goats are important? You should see what he thinks of me. I'm going to ring up the vegans and say, hey, you think broccoli is important? You should see how much more important I am. Probably an offensive thing to say. <laughs> Bad luck. Don't care. The less the others eat, the more for me. So I'm going to ask you a question. Yes, all of you with your eyes closed, don't look. And I don't care where you've come from. I don't care where you're at. If that message is spoken to you and you still don't have contentment in your heart. And I'm not the biggest believer all right, that you give your life to Jesus once and that's the end of the subject. Jesus said about the communion, do this in remembrance of me. So I, have, I say this particular prayer a lot of times and I can't even count how many times I've said it. You know what? I'll keep saying it. Because I do say to my Lord, I give you my life. It's yours. And I do that on a regular basis. So what I'm going to do, if you've heard this message, and you don't have that in your heart, so if you don't know him, and you want to know him, now's the time to put your hand up. I'm not going to call you out the front, so don't panic. Yeah, there you go, one's up. Two. Yep, so just look at me when you put your hand up so I can acknowledge you. Yep. Look, see, don't hold your hand up half a day, yeah? Yep. Is there anyone else? Yep. So just make sure you look at me so I can acknowledge you so you don't have to put your hand up. <laughs> You're right, darling. Mm -hmm. So right now, I want to pray for salvation. So we'll give it a bit longer. I'm going to tell you, I remember the day in Living Waters all those years ago. Only Marilyn were there back then. That's gone back a while, isn't it, time? Marilyn? That's a while. I can remember sitting in the audience and drug addicted, alcoholic, hiding from everybody, and I remember it was Gordon Gibbs. And when Gordon came, and he said, you'll know it's you, your heart will be pumping. You'll be sweating. You'll know because the Holy Spirit will be prompting you. And I remember sitting there with all of the above. Didn't get up. Too fearful of what everybody else would think. I thank God that he's the God of the second chance and the millionth chance. I thank God that it's not a one-off offer. That night, it was in the morning, that night I went back and he made the same thing again. The next minute, you know, I'm out the front. I can't believe I did it, Emma. Oh, all the brawling I've done and here I'm out the front like a little butter chicken. Like a little butterfly. You know, that was the beginning of the rest of my life. Took a while for that to become actually happening, but you know what? That was the day that my life actually began. And he started the journey of setting me free, and praise God, we're further down the road than we were back then, Luke. So I'm going to ask you again, if that's you, I'm not calling you out the front, just put your hand up. All you're doing is saying to Jesus, you want him. And I promise you, he will set you free. If you're looking for that peace of your burden, for those who put your hand up, I am promising you right now that when we do this prayer and you invite him into your life, you will feel it. I promise you. You'll feel like, so if you're, I don't know, if you, you know when you carry a knapsack thing around? I don't know, what's the best way to explain it? For all you ladies that put your hand up, it's like having a handbag with bear traps in it, yeah? You know when you carry it around? It's going to be like putting it down. For all you blokes, it's like carrying around a suitcase. All your belongings in it. And it's like just putting it down. That weight will leave you. I'm not rushing this with that. A couple of hands go up, but I believe there's more in it. So this is for salvation. This is the one we're praying for, for salvation. We're going to deal with the others in a minute. But right now, it's about wanting Jesus in your life. If you don't... So here's the best question that Gordon gives us that really spoke to me. He passed away and gone to the Lord a long time ago. He said, if God required your soul tonight, do you have an assurance in your heart you're going to heaven? No, because some people that actually happens, yeah? So there's the question I've got for you. If God required your soul tonight <coughs> and you're going to die, do you have a guarantee in your heart you're in heaven? Because I've got to tell you, I do. 
Not in any hurry, man, but I can't wait for that day. Just don't get eaten by a shark, take it up and live on the river. That's how you tell, because you should have an assurance in your heart that if something happens, you go to heaven. Is there any more hands? I'm just going to wait on it for a little bit longer. I'm sorry if people think I'm taking forever. Go and listen to Jesus on the mount for three days. <laughs> we only go for a few hours. Got your hand, bro. That is so cool. Is there anyone else? Not calling you out the front. You're not going to get embarrassed. All you're saying is yes to Jesus and the rest of your life will begin today. So I was a cheat. I was a thief. I was a liar. <laughs> I did do drugs and alcohol. I stole. Hurt a lot of people. Should have done two life sentences. I'm lucky I'm alive. Been in every jail cell in the Riverland. I've been to Remand. I've been to Condell. Praise God I didn't get locked away for life. That's only by His grace I got back out. And you know what? God said, I have forgiven you of all of it. Man, get your head around that. Even the hurt that I did to other people, He said, you're saved from it. That struck, troubled me for a while. See, what I hurt these people, Lord, are you telling me you've forgiven me of hurting them? And He said, they've got to forgive you for hurting them. So that's their problem, not yours. I've forgiven you for hurting them. It's up to them to forgive you. That's not your problem. And he said, I forgive you, Red. Okay. One more time. And then I'm going to keep moving. As you just put your hand up nice and high. And I believe the moment your hand goes up, we will pray a simple prayer. And we'll all do it together so nobody's going to feel left out. I promise you, you will testify to feeling change. For some of those, anger will leave, frustration will leave, loneliness will leave, being lost will leave on the spot. You know, there's always tomorrow, there's always next week, but I got this thing. It's not like it's a one-off offer, but I got this one if your life is required tonight. Oof. What if it is tonight? Turn the TV on, plenty of people die each day. What if it is today is your day to go home? Don't miss this chance to live forever. Believe me, the Bible says you won't even taste death. It'll be the kick of a finger in your life. This slide, though. All right, everybody stand, yeah? yeah? Everybody stand. We're going to do this as a church family. So, you know, and we're going to support those who put their hand up. So if you don't want to pray, you don't have to. If you don't see the need to pray, all I'm simply saying is why don't we pray with them as a family, yeah? Why don't we join in with them? Because... The moment they say this prayer, they became or become children of God. Isn't that what we've just been talking about? So each one of them that had their hand up, that are doing this for the first time, you're about to be uh, brother or sister to me. Oh, I hope you don't get a house next door to me. Run away real quick. <laughs> All right, so let's do this. So if you want to do this, do it. If you don't, that's fine. There's no pressure. But if you want to join with them to support them, so those of you that put their hands up and everybody else, I just want you to repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I come before you. My free will and my free choice. I acknowledge you as the Son of God. I acknowledge you that you came from heaven to earth just for me. That you died and you rose again and went and sat at the right hand of God that if I would believe, and I do, that I would have eternal life. Lord Jesus, I ask you right now to forgive me of my sin. Lord Jesus, oh, God's touching some people right now. Lord Jesus, I forgive those who have sinned against me. Lord Jesus, because I have forgiven and because you've forgiven me I'm set free Lord Jesus I invite you right now to come into my life as my Saviour and my Lord to live in my heart all the days of my life and I invite you freely 
Welcome, Lord Jesus, for coming into me. Lord Jesus, because I have confessed you, you have already confessed me before my Father. Thank you, Lord, that my name is in the Book of Life. I receive my salvation now. In Jesus' name. Jesus. All right, so everybody can open your eyes. We're just about to clap in a second. But for those who put their hand up, just put your hand up if you felt what I said would happen. Just go like that. Don't have to do it publicly. Just enough for me to see you. That's the power of our God to set captives free. And it don't matter where you come from or what you've done. If you just pray for people that prayer and they repeat after you, can I tell you that's here. Greatest ceiling on the planet. Can we give God a clap? Just give God a clap yeah. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the front up because we've been talking about finding contentment. So the one thing I want to deal with this morning is fear and unbelief. So if you have a fear of people, so fear of man, or if you still struggle to believe that you're worthy, I want you to come out in the front and I'm going to pray for you. You don't need to say nothing to me. That's the areas I'm praying in. I don't need to know your problems. God does. So I'm going to open up for anybody that wants prayer. All you do is come to the front and I'm going to pray for you. Don't need to know what it is. Just come to the front and I believe God's going to set people free today. 